Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fair Race versus Community was C-Class Muscle Cars. We start at the Road America circuit. This is one of the shortened versions with the alternate sort of slightly odd chicane. It looks more like a service road than part of a racetrack, but never mind. It makes for an interesting corner. There's also a terribly nasty bump there that causes some problems. Anyway, <laughs> yes, as we get started, there were four muscle cars, I think, on the front couple of rows, and it was three that broke away. Uh, early on, this orange General Lee Charger very, very fast in a straight line. There's a laggy thing. Don't mind that. Ignore the lag. It's not happening. Something's gone off. Um, yeah, very, very fast Dodge Charger in a straight line. However, there are some pretty... There's some nasty corners on this track that require a fair amount of grip. The Charger did struggle a little bit through them, of course, when it came to the straight bits, which there are plenty of as well. It was very quick. This is a very odd corner coming up here, uh, where it kind of rejoins the main track. Uh, no one really knew where they were going on, the, on this first attempt. It's a really, really odd corner, because it looks like you're cutting the corner, but you're actually not, because it's where it's supposed to. It's a strange thing. There's lots of muscle cars at the front now. Uh, I think it was, at this stage, it was five classic American muscle cars cars that, uh, that that led the way the charger coming under pressure from a ford mustang the mustang is going to have a bit of a tough time getting past here uh, he's going to give it a bit of a bump perhaps uh, as they run out of there the charger has got so much speed in between the corner you see my gap it's pulled this corner i'm not a fan of it i hate this corner i can never drive the damn thing right and the charger was really struggling with a lack of grip the mustang can just jump up the inside there's a little bit of a bump I think the Charger quite realised how far the Mustang was alongside, and uh, he ended up out onto the dirt. A little bit later on, and my Scion joined in the uh, the muscle car kind of mayhem. I thought I'd be different, you know, I'd go for something I've never driven before in the in the Scion TC, and it's actually pretty damn good. I liked this car. In a straight line, it was no match for the likes of the Charger. It was as quick as the Mustang as I swooped past two cars around the outside of the, I guess, sort of second corner, depends if you count the kind of kink on this actually no i forget where the start line is on this one uh third corner i guess is what you call it um yeah my scion very good through the corners uh, i say that as i run a little bit wide that was me being an idiot not the car's fault however it did have a slightly weird thing that uh, it would do uh, it didn't particularly like the curb over there there was a, a few cars you saw in the background there the mustang was sideways uh yeah the curves are a little bit different on here than the, the, the behave or the uh, interact with the cars perhaps a little bit differently on here than, than they do on Forza 4. It can be a little bit hard adjusting uh, back to that. At the front, and it was a Camaro that was push, uh, putting pressure sorry, on a Firebird of some description. I don't know, I can't remember the years of these cars, so if I, or if I get something wrong by accident, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, yeah, it's a tough place to overtake sometimes here at uh, Road America, as I say that, the other Firebird runs a little bit wide. It's a pretty quick track, this one. Uh, it's, a, it's one of the shorter tracks you have on Forza 5. Can be a little bit tough uh, to overtake. The corners, uh, there's only a couple and I have sort of really big braking zones. And there is an awful, awful lot of straight. Straight line speed is such a massive, massive important factor on this track, as, as, you, as you shall now see. A battle between a Mustang and an Escort Corsa. Not, a, not the normal two you see racing against each other. The Escort much, much better through the corners. The problem is the Mustang was uh, much quicker in a straight line. You'll see in the background there is a, a something, a Camaro, I think. I'm not quite sure where the Escort's going. Uh, you don't want to put a wheel on the grass and then put the brakes on because it causes problems and you end up in sort of trouble like that. Not, not a good place to, to end up, really. Uh, the Escort is much quicker through the corners than the cars around it. The problem is it just can't find a way past because everything else is much, much quicker than it's in a straight line. You'll see the size of the gap the Mustang has pulled and the amount of ground that the Camaro has caught up uh, sort of in the first couple of corners. The Camaro is past him by the time they get to the next big braking zone. And However, there is sort of better handling. There are better brakes than the Escort. And it manages to go sort of stay on the outside, sweep around the outside. But you've seen how much of a gap it's lost to the Mustangs in the first half lap and then it'll work and catch that gap back up again through the next part of the lap but it does make it very hard to overtake uh, when you've got sort of such a, a lack of straight line speed in this Escort. Still it was doing a good job of, uh, as you can see it's caught the gap back up. I spent most of my racing fourth. I was I spent a long, long time catching up to the back of the Firebird, and with a couple of laps to go, I finally closed in. I was finally there, uh, ready to give it a run for its money, and then, sure enough, I managed to fluff everything up. I, yeah, I don't know what's quite what's going on there. I clipped the gravel a tiny bit, 
and then if you look at the replay, I lose control of it, but if you look at the replay, the car is almost on two wheels and bouncing. I'm not sure if that's a laggy replay. It shouldn't be a laggy replay because it's my car. Like On a replay, my car would be the one that's not lagging everybody else's if I was causing the problem, if you like. And so I don't know why my car was doing that. It's a really bizarre one. Um, that one, either way, I ended up having a sort of a half spin and, uh, yeah, <laughs> ran out of time to catch back up to the Camaro. Uh, further back, I'm not even sure what position this is, this is over. I think it's around 5th or 6th. Uh, we have uh, the Battle of the Mustangs, which would become a common theme in this. There were many, many Fords. As well as the, one, the older Mustang dives up the inside, it's the Escort that uh, goes for possibly overtake of the evening. A rather opportunistic around the outside of the pair of the Mustangs, put himself on the inside for the next corner and jumps up two positions. That's pretty damn good, good, <laughs> good overtaking manoeuvre. The, uh, the the boss Mustang is still there, still having a look around the outside. Can't quite do it there, though. And then it's sort of a drag race down to the next corner. And, yeah, the purple Mustang hasn't quite got the straight line speed, but it has got the handling. The escorts uh, doing a bit of rallying, as is the Mustang <laughs> over the curb. Yeah, quite a few people ran wide on that corner as well. At the front, though, and it was the Halo Mustang that was going to take the wing, having... Sort of done the early work, stayed out of trouble, uh, done some good overtakes, got to the front, and nobody could really catch him. I think the Camaro was very, very slowly catching him, but it wasn't by very much, and the Camaro just ran out of laps to do anything. Uh, it was going to be a 1-2-3 for the classic muscle cars. The Mustang coming in first, Camaro in second, and a Pontiac Firebird in third. I ended up in in fourth in my Scion. It just kind of struggled with a little bit of straight-line speed uh, on this race. Still, though, it was quite good fun. Further back, and this little Mustang duel wasn't over with yet, as they come around on the final lap. It was down to the final corner, pretty much. The purple Mustang uh, was pretty good through the corners as they round the final very, very long corner. The, uh, the lead car just doesn't have the grip, he doesn't have the handling uh, to keep his car on the inside. The Mustang boss slides up the inside and uh, gets the position. I think the white Mustang actually got scared. They didn't <laughs> They didn't touch each other on that. Uh, the white Mustang just sort of, uh, yeah, I think got a little bit scared when the car was there and uh, ended up throwing his car onto the grass. We move on to the second race at the Sebring Club Circuit. Every single time I do a race on here, when I'm host, I have the grid on random, as I always do for Versus the Community. I'm always at the back. I don't know why, it just likes to put me at the back of the field. Very, very annoying. At the first quarter at Sebring, there is some bumping, as the, or the club circuit anyway. There normally is some bumping. Everybody gets away without any damage, I think. And uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of inevitable with such a very a narrow and tight hairpin. Things go a lot more wrong further round. Someone in, not in the green uh, cyclone, there's another cyclone, there's a black cyclone, their controller turned off and they were at about fourth or fifth. And that just caused chaos with everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, when that happens, there is very little you can do. You have to hope that if, if you have that kind of problem, you're out of the way. If you're at the, sort of towards the front of the field and your controller goes off, yeah, you can't really do very much. The Halo Mustang uh, puts a wheel on the curb, gets very sideways in front of me. I get very unlucky again. And I managed to go from 16th to 5th, I think, in the first lap, just avoiding the chaos. And yeah, that was a, a fairly eventful opening lap for me, I would say. There was a, yet another Ford duel. Ford, <laughs> there were so many Fords. Uh, mostly Mustangs. There's a Fiesta, though, that's trying to go around the outside of a Mustang, gets incredibly sideways. Uh, <laughs> Which is always scary. Mustang in front of us puts a wheel on the grass. Yeah, that's not, that's not a good thing to do in a big, powerful rear-wheel drive muscle car. I think I've used up all of my nine lives in this race, having avoided even more crashes and made a pass on three cars. There's an escort. Cosworth getting involved gives the, the Mustang Mark One a bit of a tap. The Fiesta's on the grass. It was pretty busy at Sebring, <laughs> if I'm honest. It'll be all around the final corner. It is the drag race down the front straight. You would think it would be the Mustang Mark I that would be the fastest car out of these two. It's not. The Fiesta was mighty, mighty fast in a straight line. This, this Mustang we're following isn't exactly slow, and the Fiesta is gone, and is going to go up the inside of the Escort before they even reach the first corner. Yeah, the <laughs> Fiesta pretty damn quick. There's a little bit of bumping going on between. There's just so many Fords. There are Fords absolutely everywhere. And this, there's another Ford battle going on here. There's a little bit further around. No, that's not a Honda Integra. That's an Acura Integra, which is... is Acura accounts as American. Guy, kind of. Yeah, never mind. It's here. Um, yeah, there was lots of racing going on here at Sebring. 
which is which is good. You, you always want to see that. Is I think it's another three Mustangs. Yeah, there's another three Mustangs that were all coming under pressure from the Integra. Surprisingly, you, know, you you think with my sigh on the Integra and the Escort, so I was expecting all of these car those cars to be the handling cars, and of course your muscle cars be the straight line speed cars. The Integra was doing a blooming good job straight line speed wise. Actually got a better drive down this back straight than the Mustang in front of it. Has a look at the inside, can't quite do it. It's a little bit too far back. The Mustang Mark One outbreaks himself, runs a little bit wide, and loses two places. Yeah, yeah that corner there's pretty notorious for that kind of thing. We see it often at Sebring, people up breaking themselves there. It's Kind of a good overtaking opportunity if you can get it right. The Integra is right under the back of the Mustang boss, just runs a little bit too wide. Now the Halo Mustangs having a look at the inside, can't quite get the move done. And the Integra is coming back as well. It's all very busy and uh, <laughs> plenty of stuff going on in this race. At the front, we'd pull the pretty sizable margin uh, to, well, to second and, behind, and further behind because they were so busy arguing amongst themselves. That, uh, yeah, we, we pulled out a huge margin. My Scion was proving to be a very good sort of overall car here. Caught out to the back of the Firebird in front, which was not an all-round car. It was very much a straight-line speed vehicle. Made it a bit of a pain trying to find a way past uh, because it was struggled through the corners. It was sideways everywhere, near enough. My car had an awful lot more grip. Problem is, the minute we got on a straight, the Firebird would just fly past. I've got my car on the inside. My car also likes to shoot fire. Lots of fire comes out of the back of my Scion. I, I don't know quite why, but um, yeah, as we come around sort of the, the final corner, the, the Firebird does struggle with these, and as we come onto the front straight, I do have a pretty sizable gap, and I have a better drive onto this kind of front straight. However, uh, even though it's not the longest of straights we go to, uh, the Firebird just flies past. Yes, pretty damn quick here as well. Uh, in the first corner though, I've still got my car on the inside and I've got much better brakes and can stop a lot quicker. So I dive up the inside and get the position back. The problem is the Firebird's not really that far behind now as we come on to the second sort of long straights down here. And yeah, that's, it's pretty damn quick again. I again go in defensive. I go so defensive in fact I may have put a wheel slightly on the grass. It's a good thing I did though as I've still got my car on the inside. The Firebird can't really move across to defend and I can keep my car on the inside and get the pass done as the Firebird's struggling with grip again. Now it comes into the sort of the tighter, twistier section and I can run away and get myself a decent gap before the next corner. And there's another Ford battle pack of, of four cars, three Mustangs. The fact those three Mustangs were racing the entire race. Every so often there was another car that would join in. And in this case it's a Sierra that's got... I don't know what's going on with these. Last time we had, I think it was a Camaro we had, but the weird with the weird wheel glitch. That's really hard to say. Weird wheel. Uh, yeah, that doesn't flow very well. Uh, I don't know what's going on with it. You, have, you can sort of notice in between the wheels. I think it's a weird thing. Anyway, the Sierra dives up the inside of the Mustang to to get the place. Uh, there's a little, little bit of a rub going on there on the exit. But uh, I was surprised to see how much overtaking we have, <laughs> have going on here. Sebring... It's an all right track for overtaking, but we tend uh, it's not the most amazing of tracks. We've, we've not necessarily had always exciting races here, but uh, this one was proving to have uh, plenty of stuff going on in it. At the front, though, once I'd cleared the Firebird, I kind of got out of range of its straight line speed, basically. Uh, I wasn't really troubled. The Scion was actually a very, very good car here. I do quite like the Scion. Uh, it has pretty decent straight line speed considering and uh, yeah it was pretty damn good through the corners so yeah i managed to work my way from last into the lead which i'm pretty pleased with uh, on this track i managed to avoid all the chaos which is uh, really rather important and then my ai decides that it wants to go and do rally i, I don't know why the ai do that they're a bit useless we move on to the third and final race at the alps circuit i think this is the alps club i can never remember the name of the damn thing i, I this one was going to be an interesting one <laughs> because Muscle car, or what is a mostly mostly a field made up of muscle cars. There are a few other ones thrown in, but it's largely made up of muscle cars uh, on a track that's really best with cars that are very high grip. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> it was always going to be interesting racing around here as you go through this very very fast section for the first time. There's a Firebird going very. You don't want to be going sideways through there with a pack of cars behind you. Everybody gets away with it. Just about. <laughs> I would not want to be sideways in that fire, but Husky finally managed to connect for this final race. There are lots of problems with the Forza 5 servers. He's driving the black Mustang that uh, this Camaro has just gone past. Husky's not giving up, though. The Camaro runs a little bit wide. Husky keeps his car on the inside. Yes, he's going to be on the outside 
for this next corner. However, it's not a particularly challenging corner. You can carry a lot of speed through there. So Husky gets himself on the inside for the next bit. Camaro still trying to go around the outside. He's got a wheel over the kerb and uh, maybe a little bit off the track, but he can't get his car turned for the next corner. Just doesn't have the turn, doesn't have the grip. Runs wide, brushes into the wall. And now it's back to being side by side through probably the scariest section of the track. You don't want to go side by side through here too often. Uh, they give each other plenty of room. Uh, you probably couldn't have given any more room on that section of the track. It's, it's a tough place going side by side with anybody through there, uh, let alone in two muscle cars that are probably not the grippiest of vehicles. Um, and then there's a little bit of a tag as they come onto the back straight, um, and the Camaro has managed to get the position. Yeah, going too wide through that chicane bit is normally a recipe for disaster. This was more of a recipe for disaster. This is, a, I don't know, a lap or two on. And the top six, almost, you know, the top five, the sixth car's not very far behind, they're in a line. When you see this, I was just a little bit further back. You might see my car in the background. Um, when you see the top six covered by a second, you know, you, you know things are not necessarily going to end particularly well, especially when that said top six are driving muscle cars in a track they've probably never driven these cars around. Uh, yeah, it was kind of inevitable that something was going to go wrong. And when you try and go three wide or four wide, I don't even know. Many muscle cars trying to fit into the same bit of track. Unfortunately, it was Husky that was uh, going to come off worse. Uh, ended up just getting ping-ponged around in between cars. And nobody could really do very much about it in the end. Uh, Husky ended up in the wall. Uh, then there was to be, again, this could well be overtake of the evening as well. It's a tough choice between, uh, <laughs> between the two. That is an incredibly hard place to do that sort of move. Going around the outside through that far section is... Yeah, that's pretty damn impressive. Well done for, uh, for getting your car around there. The Mustang is then up the inside of the Firebird as well uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the straight. Sorry, I was making pretty good progress in my Scion. Again, this track kind of suited the Scion. Uh, is it, it wasn't too bad in the straight line and it had quite a lot of grip through the corners so yeah it was another track that i really quite like driving this car around if it's a track i think i should use more it's a nice track um the outer circuit i tend not to use it but i'm definitely going to be using it some more in versus community as you come into the first corner though i'm not entirely sure what happens i just get a bit of a slide on i could do nothing to stop it and ended up going around in the circle uh, everybody got away without without any problems i spun my car around when it was safe uh, I sort of grazed, I think it was a Firebird or a Camaro, I'm not entirely sure what it was, that, uh, <laughs> that I kind of slightly grazed, but no harm done, I just dropped a load of positions and ended up in a battle with Husky that would go on for quite a long race. A little bit disappointed about that one, because my car was pretty good here. At the front, and it was uh, all of the muscle cars, well, I say muscle cars, there's a Fox Body Mustang in there as well, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, again, it was two more Fords and a Camaro, I think, I'm not even sure what it is in fourth at the moment. Uh, yeah, again, Camaro's run a little bit wide. We saw quite a few cars uh, scrape that fence. We get a very close up at the back of the Camaro as they run through the S's. Is yeah, that, those corners are pretty scary. Just being close to anybody because if the car in front of you brushes a wall and if you're that close, you saw how little you can see if you're following somebody that closely. If the car in front brushes the wall, makes a tiny, tiny error. There is nothing you can do about it, pretty much. Because uh, first of all, you're probably going to be following them because you can't see very much and there is very little room to manoeuvre if they do have an accident. So yeah, following that closely is a little bit scary. Overtaking is also quite tricky here at the out circuit. All of the corners are very, very fast. There are very little braking zones to sort of try and attack somebody. Uh, unless you get a very brave pass, as you saw earlier, around the outside of one of these corners, or you just have an awful lot more grip. It is incredibly hard to get past. The Camaro running very, very wide out of these sections. Your best overtaking bet is at the end of this sort of small straight. It's the biggest braking zone you really have to contend with here. Uh, the Mustang is just too far back, can't really do anything about it. And the car behind him, another Mustang, is also too far back. It can be a bit of a pain trying to, uh, to find a way past somebody here. But I, I do like it. It's a very fast, very flow track this one uh, as I said it does tend to work better with uh, cars with more downforce but uh, it was still proving to be pretty damn exciting we've got uh, a couple of escort Cosworths that were about to do battle over a position as a, the, t the lack of telemetry on Forza replays makes it very hard for me to remember and keep track of everything that's going on uh, the escorts uh, not, 
I think the car at front has got slight engine damage. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'm used to Forza 4 replays where I just pay no attention because the, the the replays are all dodgy with damage. It may well have had a bit of engine damage as it gets passed in a straight line. I think, is that a Chevy Nova behind them? I don't actually know. Probably should have looked that up before I started talking. Uh, but that was much quicker in a straight line. But of course, is going to struggle through the corners in the end. It is the plain white Escort that uh, managed to get the better of the other one. However, just that, that like, engine damage possibly, that lack of straight line speed either way, puts the, the white and blue car right behind him. He goes very, very defensive. It's about as, uh, about as aggressive on the defending as you can get, really. And around the next corner, there's no real room for them to move. Then there's a weird lag spike, and there are some flying cars. Yeah, so Forza 5 still has a little bit <laughs> little bit of odd, odd lag going on. I thought I'd show this one, because people would probably be interested, having just caught it out of the corner of your eye on that last shot. I don't know what goes on. It lags the Firebird back into the Nova and then they go for a spin and then they go down the road and then there's a bump on the wall and lag has killed two cars, which is a shame because there's going to be a four-way battle for whatever position that is. And then there's me and Husky. We're, we were still battling over where, where, wherever, really. And there's a Mustang. Very good. <laughs> very, very close to the wall. At the front, and nothing really changed for the rest of the race. In the end, the Camaro just pulled a little bit of a gap to the cars behind, just sort of a bit of a safety margin. wasn't wasn't massive, wasn't particularly like a huge amount faster than the cars behind, but it was enough to be relatively comfortable. Uh, again, you can see the top three are there, with all all within shot. Uh, pretty good race again here here at the Alps circuit. It's a little bit tougher race, as I said, very hard to overtake on this track, and these cars are really not designed for it. But it was a pretty good fun race. Me and Husky, this is basically what the last sort of four or five laps of my race was. Me and Husky just fought over this position for <laughs> the remainder of the race after both of us had incidences. Neither of us had any damage on our car, we just kind of got spun around. Uh, things were, yeah, really rather close as we head towards the final corner. Our cars were incredibly evenly matched uh, through here. Like, we've both we're very, very similar top speeds and both had pretty good handling. Husky's trying to look around the outside, realise he's not going to make it, cuts back to try and get on the inside. However, this final corner, because it kind of opens out towards the end, I can keep my foot in as I start to slide a little bit wide, and I managed to keep the position. Uh, it was a good fun race, actually. I don't know, I think we ended up 6th or 7th in that one. But uh, yeah, it was a really rather fun race. So there we go, that is it for for this versus community as Husky AI manages to overtake my AI. Um, yeah, it was, it was pretty good fun. Unfortunately, we are not going to be back on Forza 5 for a few weeks because it's got so many problems at the moment. While the lobby chat actually worked on the most part, occasionally it would decide that one person you wouldn't be able to hear. Uh, so for the final race, nobody, I think only like one person could hear Husky and the rest of us couldn't. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit weird. Also... The lobby kept thinking it was full when it only had like 12 people in it, so I couldn't invite. That's why the, the first race there's only 12 cars going, because the lobby thought it was full. And yeah, the lobbies are kind of broken. Quite a lot broken, in fact, on Forza 5 at the moment. It, yeah, it really wasn't working very well. It was a real fight getting this to work. As I said, Husky couldn't connect for the first two races. It just, it just did not want to work. So yeah, we're not going to be on Forza 5 for a few weeks. Next week, uh, we're going to be on Forza 4 on Thursday the 13th of March. We are going to be running A-Class Italian cars. I saw that someone suggest, I think it was last week, someone suggested we should do Italian cars. And that sounded like great fun. We're definitely going to be doing that. Uh, and we're going to make it A-Class just so we have a bit more variety. So we can get a couple of Ferraris, a Lam Lamborghini Diablo. I think that's in A-Class. So yeah, it's going to be A-Class, a little bit higher class of car. Um than perhaps ideal, but uh, yeah, it should be good fun. It's gonna it could be an interesting choice of vehicles, and let's hope they all don't break down before the finish line. If you wish to sign up to this event, it, you can you can on our forums. There will be a link in the description. Go there, go to the versus community section and the sign up section, and that is where you can sign up to take part. However, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye.